Hi, I'm Brenton Stacey, the Public Relations Officer at Avondale University College. I'm talking this afternoon with Rodney Brady, who's received a citation from the class of 1980 at Homecoming 2020. Welcome, Rod, and congratulations. Well, thank you very much. I'm very honoured. Just to start, give us a brief snapshot of life now. Maybe who's in your family, where you're living, and what you're doing. Okay, at home at the moment, it's just me and my wife. We're empty nesters, living on the central coast of New South Wales, just north of where I work at the division office. Now, you've been at the South Pacific Division Office, the, the, the head office of the church in the South Pacific now for, uh, for a long time. And uh, you've been uh, in the role of the treasurer or chief financial officer, as it is now, for more than 20 years. And that's longer than any other person in the role. So I guess the question is, what keeps you there? What keeps me there? I actually enjoy what I'm doing. I, I've loved every minute of while I've been working here. Um, every day is a new day. There's a lot of variation and things are constantly changing. So I'm always being challenged with new things, new, new opportunities and things that need to be done. So it's a case of I don't actually get bored here. So there's no reason to leave at this point. You've never worked a day in your life. Never worked a day in my life. Well, as in you enjoy your job. I enjoy my I enjoy my job. And I think if you don't enjoy your work, it's a chore to go to go to work. If you enjoy your work and you love what you're doing, the time just seems to go so quickly. Now, Rod, you've been influenced um, by um, thinking in the world of business. Uh, mm -hmm. You've mentioned in your citation uh, thinking around economic rationalism, the the you know, efficiency of financial markets. Yeah. How do you bring those business ideas into a church setting, which is, I guess, not really like a business, although there are business elements, but how do you, how do you bring those ideas into a church setting? They're not as different as you think. I go to a lot of business training events and I often in my role go to a lot of church training events. And it's interesting the language that's used is slightly different, but the themes are the same. Like I've been to a lot where you actually think, oh, that's the same as the way of thinking and managing as what's being put in through saying church growth. There's actually a lot of similarities. The, the role the role I've got to do is to try and harmonise that thinking. Mm -hmm. um, it is different because in a business setting, you've usually got just a few key people that can make the decisions and everybody has to fall into line. In our church system, where it really stands out as different is that we're a representative system and we have to work by consensus, which means there's more people involved in the decision-making. So it actually takes more time to get people on board with those decisions. So that's where you get a lot of a lot of differences. Also, within the church area of uh, decision-making, you get a lot more emotion because people are more invested in the church. When it goes to a corporate setting, people think, oh, I'm just paid for what I do. But in a church setting, whether it be a member in a volunteer role or a church employee, they are very heavily invested in the church. They love it. They serve it for mission reasons. So the emotions around decisions become a lot more complex. You, you also um, mentioned uh, in, in, um, in some of the research that, uh, that I read um, in, in preparing your citation, that you helped bring some positive changes to the church in this part of the world, and no doubt navigating um, the the balance between making good financial decisions and, mm. and bringing people with you. What are some of those um, some of the decisions you look back on and think, yeah, made a good decision there. This was good for the church. Well, there's lots of them. One that I was personally very um, invested in probably from prior frustrations in, a, in my other roles and as, as a local church member was the, the difficulties in local churches being able to acquire property in major areas. So during our time here, we've actually changed um, our loan procedures to make it a bit more easy for churches to have loans. The biggest one that we've done is we actually did a lot of financial rearrangements at the division, which means that we're actually able to give grants to local churches and we've been giving 
you know, in better times before interest rates fell, a million to a million and a half from the division purely to help like, the acquisition of local churches. And so that's one that I was actually very passionate about because of, you know, my prior experience. And I look back and I think there's so many churches that have been now helped and going as a result of that that wouldn't have been otherwise possible. There's been other things as well we've done. But if you look at things that I was probably most interested in, that's one that I look at that I was actually very Myself personally invested in like a church member would be, and I talk about some of the way that we actually invest ourselves in the church more than just our job. Let's go back to the local church there because, and let's go back to the beginning of your story in many ways, and it was the persistence of your local church minister at the time that actually brought you to Avondale. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that story. So a shout out to all the local church ministers here who, um, oh. who <laughs> encouraged their young adults in their congregations to, to go to oh, that was, was your story. I look back on it now and I think it was an era. It was a different era where, you know, the local church pastor was a really strong advocate for Avondale and he was after all the young people. Um, as I was coming up to leaving school, he and his wife, I did church social, so would just sit me down and say, you've got to go to Avondale. And I just laughed it off and said, not going to Avondale. I didn't really know, know what Avondale was too much anyway. I said, no, not going to Avondale. They just badgered me. And I resisted and resisted. And with great pride, I never went. And they were really disappointed and um, that I didn't go because so I enrolled into a, an institution in Melbourne to do studies and went working. And But they still kept badgering me. You know, I'd sit, you'd sit down to church lunch, they'd, they'd target you. Got to go to Avondale, got to go to Avondale. So they didn't let up. Then I wasn't happy. Um, I didn't enjoy my job. I wasn't enjoying my studies. And so I gave in. And I sort of, and, and I've thanked them a couple of times because. Um, since that time because um, without that persistence, I look back on it, I actually wouldn't have gone to Avondale. Mm. Uh, it was really the one-on-one -on -one with the persistence of the church pastor. So I have a debt of gratitude for that. And I, if any pastors are watching, I'd encourage them to be also advocates because while well, they may resist, later on they may thank you. Now, that was uh, a significant decision to come to Avondale because it really led into um, a, a, life, uh, a life's work in um, in denominational employment, yeah. um, forty years. Yeah. Uh, just give us some highlights. I think you've sort of served in two or three conferences. Uh, you've mm -hmm. also been to Fiji as well. Yeah. So just give us a, a quick summary of where you've been over that time. Everything, everything's been a highlight. Like I look back at each place, and each place has had some kind of a highlight. It's sort of been quite an adventure because, particularly when you're young, you go to new places and to see it. Um, we started off in Melbourne where, where I grew up, so it was very, very familiar, safe place to start. Then we went to Tasmania. I'd never been to Tasmania in my life. It was fantastic. You know, so many things to see and do and um, ended up in a great setting with, you know, great staff there to enjoy. And then from there we went to New Zealand, which was another highlight because we had children there changing it all. Then we came back to Australia, a few positions in Australia. I've, I've enjoyed it. We've actually looked at all the moves that we've had as an adventure that we've loved. It's just been experiences that we're just so grateful for. Probably a highlight of places to live because it was so different was Fiji. That was quite a highlight just because of the differences that were there and what we got to experience. What, is, um, what has that experience in Fiji taught you about the makeup of the church in the South Pacific? I mean, I'm familiar with how it looks in Australia, yeah. in New Zealand, but what does the church look like um, now that you've served in the Pacific? Oh, I just changed my perspective of church because I'd only ever known the church in Australia and New Zealand. Going to the Pacific and doing church the Pacific way was just an eye opener. Um, the, the numbers of people that go to church there, as far as the Adventists in there, very significant. Everybody knows who Adventists are, which makes a big difference. You're walking along the streets and you see on a Sabbath morning people out going to church. That was a eye opener, and the community that. Um, is so much associated with church. We tend to go to church and go home, whereas we learned that church is all day um, and the strong community connections, the bonds, um, the outreach, the excitement and fervour around church just changed our whole view of uh, what Adventism is and what the impact on people's lives can be. So for us, it was a very significant eye-opener to do that. It also gave us another appreciation of um, other cultures because Within Fiji, I had to go across a number of different countries, so it's my cultural learning experience I hadn't been exposed to to date. Um, so yeah, we just we just love the experience, love the people, love the fellowship, loved everything about it. And for a family, 
it was a really big highlight because it actually taught us another set of values. And it was we sort of were looking at it from the way the community is so strong, materialism is a lot less. We didn't realise how materialistic we were till it was taken away from us. And then we would um, hear what was happening back at home. And for a while then, my wife had something wrong and she had to go back home. She'd tell the stories of what people were doing. It almost caused me stress because I think life suddenly seemed a lot more complicated and problems and issues. And we said, when we leave here, how do we actually live a simpler life that we can actually be be happier and it just taught us it just changed our values around you come back into this society you caught up it's not what you would like to do but you caught up in it but it did give us a, an appreciation for a whole different set of values which we treasure and remind ourselves of and you speak you've spoken a lot in this interview of um of we and we is you and catherine your wife of 38 yeah. congratulations so yeah. 38 years this year what is the key to a successful marriage? I think choosing well at the beginning is a good start. Um, and also, I'm very lucky because Catherine's very patient. And I think, you know, she's been willing to move. She's basically been willing to give up her working life, to follow, to do things, to sacrifice and putting up with me being having long periods of time away. So I think uh, without her patience, I, I think life could be very, very different. So... Um, I think choosing a good wife and a wife that is willing to support you is also essential as well. Well, Rod, thank you for speaking with uh, us today. The class of 1980 honours you mm. for a 40 years of Adventist finances that has enabled the church to respond to change. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brenton. I appreciate it. And I want to thank you for the honour that you've bestowed on me. I appreciate it. And I want to thank Avondale for all they've done for me over the years. Thank you.